Welcome back, everybody. It is time for another Myth Psychosis with Violence. If you're new to my channel, I talk about Myth Psychosis, a lot of other drug addiction stories. Um, but I'm just going to go ahead and jump into the story. This ain't going to be a long video. Um, it's around the time of my last video, probably around 2000, anywhere from 2002 to 2004. Um, I was hanging out, I was hanging out with a guy named, we'll call him Bishop. And, uh, he had a couple, and once again, me being the young dope fiend I was, I was around a bunch of older people, um, in the dope game. Um, and he had some people that, or a guy that was just getting out of the feds. And, um, the guy was wanting to, uh, get high, obviously, when he first got out. He went and picked him up. And I didn't meet the guy yet. And he's like, hey, yeah, go pick us up a sack. I don't remember how much it was. It wasn't much. It was probably like a half a gram or a gram or something. And I pinched the fuck out of it. Because I was a young kid. Didn't know what it was, what it meant. You know, if he, I, I can't, he did a lot of time. I mean, he was, these guys were like 20 years older than me. And um, he did a lot of time in the feds. And Bishop had went and got him. And like I said, me being the dope fan I was, I pinched the sack pretty heavy. And, you know, didn't think about, you know, there could be repercussions from that because this guy's a fucking psycho. Um, but when they got back, I gave him the sack of dope and Bishop gave him a scale to weigh it out. And they're like, what the fuck? This was supposed to be a gram and it's like 0.5, dude. You know, or whatever it was, it was like half, half of what it was supposed to be. And I was like, man, that's how they gave it to me. And he's like, come on, man. Bishop was like, dude, I know what kind of dope you get. And how you get it, he didn't give it to you like that. That's some bullshit. So, um, I don't remember what I did. I left again, and he was calling me, talking about, this dude just got out of the pen. He's gonna fucking kill somebody over fucking selling him a skimp sack and all this other stuff, because that was his money. He had fucking, he was gonna pay for it. That wasn't even my money. And so I was like, all right. But I wasn't coming off the shit that I pinched. So I think I stayed gone for a couple hours. And uh, this guy was a big crank fiend. He got locked up. Uh, like I said, I don't remember what he was locked up for how long, but it was a long time. And, you know, he's a big, swole, fucking um, peckerwood-looking dude. You know, um, definitely Aryan whatever... Uh, organization he was in but definitely blasted out definitely was a scary looking dude and um so because no one could get that peanut butter crank that he was used to he's like well the next best thing is doing speed and smoking crack with it so obviously i had a i had a good crack connection um because that was part of my big hustle but between trading the weed for the crack and the crack for the fentanyl and then the fentanyl for the meth. If you haven't seen that, I don't remember what video it was I talked about that. That was like my biggest hustle. I'll probably do another video on that because um, it was it was way before all this fentanyl stuff was going on right now. I was getting the uh, fentanyl patches. I knew two people that got fentanyl patches and another person that got morphine. All of them smoked crack. My crack dealer couldn't get loud weed. I could get loud weed. This is back, you gotta think, this is back in 2003. Everybody was used to smoking like the best they could find most of the time, especially around here on the East Coast. Um, was like what they called mid-grade. And, uh, but I had a friend that, that had, that had the plug on the, what we called hydro back then. Now it's called loud or whatever. I don't even smoke weed. Um. But that was my hustle. I'd go get weed, trade it to the crack man. He'd give me a shit ton of crack for it. Like, almost gram for gram. There was a couple of times he gave me gram for gram from shake, from a shake sack he had. And um, then I would go water whip it and take it back to the people with the fentanyl and the morphine and get a shit ton of fentanyl and morphine. And my ultimate goal was to trade all that for meth. I guess I'm not going to be able to make another video on that because I just kind of told it. But anyways... I had a very good crack connection, and I wasn't a big crackhead at the time. I mean, I'd smoke it, but it wasn't like, if I went and got it, I went, I made it right, basically. You know, they gave me $100, and I brought them a shit ton of crack back. 
And it just started this fucking, we got to get it, we got to get it. So after that ran out, <clears throat> I called my connection. He didn't answer. I don't know. He, I think he went, he went, he went out of town because he was always going out of town to Atlanta and Florida and shit. And, um, so I couldn't get a hold of him. So I knew like people over in the hood in Hendersonville. I knew a lot of people over there. But I didn't have their phone number, so we just, I was like, well, let's just go over to Green Meadows, it's the name of the hood, and, uh, we can score over there. So, it's the guy that just got out of prison in the passenger seat, Bishop's driving, um, Bishop's son is in the back seat, and I'm in the back seat behind the driver, and, um, we pull up in Green Meadows, and this is back before... They did all these operations, like, really shut these hoods down. I'm sure there's still hoods like that around, but uh, where I live at now, there's none where you can just pull up there, and there's always a gang of people out there selling dope. Um, they kind of shut that down around here. I'm sure in bigger cities, they still have it, but it used to be everywhere you could do that. In the early 2000s, you could pull up in any projects, and there was always going to be a shit ton of people out there selling dope. So we get over there. And uh, I don't recognize anybody. Of course, it's like 2 o'clock in the morning, and they're all standing in a group of people. I'm like, and they all rush the car. They got their hands out, you know, uh, putting their hand in the car with the dope. How much you want? And uh, the one guy that he wants to buy dope from fucking flexes his ass, sells him fucking candle wax, man. Because it, it looked like it was huge. It looked like it was fucking fire. But it was fucking like vanilla candle wax. So we drive off. And this dude don't even fucking wait. And you gotta remember. I didn't spend the whole time with them while I was gone. While they were thinking I was going to get another sack of meth. Before I got the crack. I, I wasn't with them for like two or three hours. So I didn't know what they were doing. But um. So this guy don't even wait till we get home. He pulls the stem out. Puts the crack on there and starts to melt it. And he's like oh fuck he's like they fucking got me luckily he was the one he was like no nah, i want to buy it i want to buy it because he i guess he thought that i would fucking try to pinch him or something but um luckily he's the one that did it so he couldn't play couldn't put the blame on me i took him over there obviously that was the spot he just picked the wrong fucking one and all of a sudden he's like we gotta go back and he reaches under the seat and pulls out this fucking it couldn't have been, but, I mean, the, the barrel was sawed off all the way at the stock. Pulls out this sawed-off shotgun. Like, you blast that thing, you're going to hit about 20 feet spread. So, and I'm like, oh, fuck. And Bishop's like, fuck it. He turns back around, and we, uh, we probably made it, like, maybe a mile away. You go across these railroad tracks, he's like, I'm going to find that motherfucker. And, um... We pull back over there, and we, we drive back up into the group, and you don't see him. This dude was a big, fat dude, and he obviously, because he flexed him for whatever, was, wasn't was around there anymore, or he could have seen us pulling up, because, like, in this hood, you can see the one way in. You can see a car pulling up. I don't remember what kind of car Bishop was driving, but it was probably a pretty obvious car. And the guy dipped out, and so we start cutting through... The way Green Meadows is, is it's like four different roads. And they all, it's not it's not like apartment projects. It's weird because it's like little houses, but it's all like projects. It's hood. And then there's some apartments over by the uh, Boys and Girls Club over there. So we start cutting up all the roads. And finally, we see the dude. And uh, he's walking, cutting between two houses. And the dude that got out of the feds, I don't even remember what we what I called him, dude. I met him this one time, and I said, I'm never going around that motherfucker again. He goes, hey. And he pulls the shotgun up, and he goes, hangs it out the window, and it's like, boom. And all I remember was just fucking ear ringing. Like, I was like, where? And you got to think, we were smoking crack. I was paranoid as fuck. And he just shot this 50, and it was all, it had to have been bird shot because he didn't even hit the guy. And the guy was like, I don't know, maybe 30, 40 feet ahead of us. Because <laughs> it just sprayed out everywhere. And then he racks it again, and he's like, boom! 
And then by like, a, I think the third shot is when we start hearing gunshots back. Pow, 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 pow. You know, uh, none of them hit the car, but they were obviously shooting at us. So the bitch is like, God, we gotta get the fuck out of here. Just, ah! Tears out of there and um, cuts around, bends the corner. And then we see who's shooting at us and they're like, pow, pow, shoot the fucking side of the car up. And I'm like, I'm gonna fucking die or go to jail. I don't know if they shot that dude because by the by the I'm over here like ah my my ears are freaking ringing. I didn't know that I was gonna be involved in a fucking drive by shooting, just going to buy some crack, just going to get high. Shit flipped. He this dude flipped the script like it was nothing. Like just got out of the feds and is ready to fucking kill somebody. And uh, I don't know if he hit that guy. They hit the car two times with their shots. It wasn't even the guy we were shooting at that was shooting back at us. Um, it was somebody else that was like, we were, uh, we were at like the south end of the, the one road that cuts back around. And this dude was all the way over on, I guess, like the north end. He was on the opposite end. So when we bend, when we bend the corner and come back around, that's when we seen him and he actually hit the car twice. Um, luckily didn't hit anybody, didn't kill nobody, didn't go through a window. It went through the back of the trunk, like the the corner panel on the back. We didn't even notice that it hit the car until we got back home, because there was just so much chaos, and all I heard was gunshots. I didn't hear the thump thump of it hitting the car. If it even made a noise, it might have just went through it. But um, luckily we lived. Luckily, we got out of the freaking projects before the police came over there. Cause we heard sirens, and the way you get out of there, you got like I said, you gotta go back across the railroad tracks, and it's it's a long road, like, and uh, it's right in downtown, and you have to go down that long road, and we were hearing the sirens coming, and it's like, man, we're fucking, we're going to jail. Luckily, cut up and went down a uh, towards like the Mexican hood on Spartanburg Highway, and I guess the the cops had um got the shots fired for Green Meadows and and I uh, just went over there and luckily we dipped out quick enough because uh, it had been all bad, man. Especially for that guy. I mean, there's no telling what he would have done. Um, the guy that just got out of the feds. But that was like my first experience at like 18 of dealing with someone that did a lot of time in prison and it was just like, it was mind-boggling to me. I mean, you would think that that would have set me on a better track but no i mean we went back to bishop's house we noticed that we got that the car got shot up twice and he's more worried about his wife finding out that um that his car got shot up he's trying to figure out a way to uh put like, i think he was talking about putting duct tape on it and spray painting it the same color and i'm like yeah that is some tweaker ass shit but you go right on ahead and do that and they were out of crack, and this dude's like, man, keep calling your dude, keep calling your dude, we need some more crack. I'm like, dude, we just about fucking died. Fuck that. All right, I'm gonna try to find some crack. All right, y'all. Mess Psychosis Stories with Violence, part two. Y'all stay tuned. Part three is coming soon. Till next time, y'all. Megatron TV, Mess Psychosis Stories, over and out.